um, which I think leans into now I'll ask you about these these two primary cognitive impediments uh, that you see in the human in the human that limit our ability to solve problems um, and that the super aware intelligent machine will not. Um, the first of which is that, uh, oh yes, the first of which is the illusory self, which I just sort of infer, um, referred to just then. And the second of which is, quote, we lack the brain capacity to acquire data, analyze it for actionable insights, then rank the value of the resulting knowledge. So can you dive in a little bit more deeply about these two cognitive impediments and why you see them as being detrimental to humanity's ability to thrive in symbiotic unity with itself and the natural world. Sure. So, so yeah, I know there's a there there are you know many different philosophers who have uh, kind of uh, uh, defined what the self is and so forth. But the way I think about it, and it seemed like to be the most practical way to think about it, was this idea that we have this illusion in our mind that kind of it developed during you know when uh, during our evolution, hunter. You know, hunter or scavengers, hunter gatherers, etc., where we really had to, uh, we really, uh, we were, we by our brain, we were programmed to be responsible for one particular entity, and this is this entity that the cells that we have and so forth, and you had to do everything you can to compete for that banana or for that that scrap in order to stay alive and to reproduce with your uh, w with uh, with other individuals so that your genes get passed on and so forth. Uh, so I, I refer to that as the illusory self. Uh, you know, different. Uh, there are people still studying the brain. They don't know how big that that um, that part of the brain that that uh, programs the self is. But you know, perhaps it's like the size of a golf ball or something. So we have this. You know, presumably we have this thing in our brain that kind of drives us to really just think about ourselves, and um, at, at the expense of uh, of thinking about kind of actually how the world works. So we're, we're thinking of ourselves at the expense of how the, the whole world works. So we know now that everything is interconnected and so forth. And, uh, but, and we live in this highly complex world. We created economies and governments and corporations and so forth. And, and all of that was built uh, with humans, us imperfect humans who have this illusory self uh, who, uh, and, and I believe that is the function, that is the feature of, uh, of, of humans that has been embedded in our corporations and governments that makes everything kind of work incorrectly or how, you know, or, or, or to work in a way that uh, is not ideal. So that's the one side. Uh, so the illusory self baked into corporations, governments. The other side is our wait, wait, inability. Let's, let's, let's yeah. pause for a second here because I, want, I sure. want to dive in a bit because um, this makes sense. You know, if, 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 if all of our institutions are based in a me centric or me and my family centric kind of mentality that mm -hmm. is limited to the lifespan it's never going to be able to incorporate the type of broad picture broad picture um thinking that enables us to be making choices that benefit you know the seven generations so you know the, the indigenous speaking or the indigenous premise um mm -hmm. But then also, it, it wasn't always this way. So there was, you know, in hunter-gatherer societies, or we'll say, you know, traditional indigenous cultures, there is a lot of embedded in the culture, the self, that the self-construal is intermingled with the ancestors. There's a connection with the ancestors, which means there's a connection with the past, which means there's inherently a connection with the self existing into the future beyond death. And then there's also the interweaving of uh, of the self into the ecology and you know with what some people might call magical thinking or other people might call otherwise a, a a relationship with the forces of nature in a way that puts those forces of nature as a direct expression of either the self or the self's role in life in some way or another mm -hmm. the self sort of like um why it's there its purpose right um, so are we talking about something that's fundamental to the human that, you know, that was protected from, uh, by the development of cultures, indig indigenous cultures that were able to live sustainably with their, in their environments for thousands of years, for millennia, or is this a fundamental, uh, impediment that's present to the modern cult of humanity, the cult of the self that has, a, that arose from 
whatever, some sort of social, ecological, you know, context at one point that has just ballooned into dominating the planet. Yeah, I would say so. So in general, I agree 100 percent on, um, you know, hunter gatherer cultures and being integrated with forests and so forth. And, you know, that served that served them well. And I believe it still does. And that that way of thinking, I think, is an extremely beneficial way of thinking for us and, and something we can learn from uh, over time and so forth. I think the turning point from from what I understand in my research is the turning point in history was about 10,000 years ago where when uh, some humans started to leave the forest and to uh, and to become more stationary. So they were less nomadic, more stationary, started creating farms and so forth. And once you create a farm, then you have a piece of property that you have to protect. Uh, and then uh, and then you have to start building power structures, towns and and uh, and administrations and so forth to protect uh, the farm. And then suddenly there's there are haves and have nots uh, in society and so forth. And I believe that's so so the the kind of illusory self, which is, you know, inherent part of uh, humanity, uh, which uh, wasn't really much of a problem during hunter gatherer times. Uh, became much more of a problem during uh, the agricultural era, era, and then the industrial era, era, and so forth. So that, so that it's that feature of humanity that I believe uh, kind of led to the way that we developed our modern societies. 